Good day, everybody. How are you doing? Today, we are going to talk about Rolle's theorem. So I'll share my computer screen with you. So an explanation of Rolle's theorem. Rolle's theorem states, let f be continuous on the closed interval. Notice how the parenthesis is written for closed interval, a, b, and differentiable in the open interval. Again, this is different parenthesis, a, b. If f a is equal to f b, then there must be at least one number c in the inter open interval a, b, such that f prime c equal to zero. Proof, let f a function of, let the function value at a is equal to d is equal to f of b. If f of c is equal to d, case one, for all x in the closed interval a, b, then f is constant in that, inside that interval, on the interval. We know that the derivative of a constant function is zero, Thus, in this case, f prime x is equal to zero for all x in a, b, okay? So that's one proof. Case two, suppose, suppose f of x is greater than d for some x in a, b, okay? By extreme value theorem, we know that f has a maximum at some value c in the interval. Since f of c is greater than d, remember d is the value of the function at f of a and f of b, at a, x equal to a and x equal to b. Since f of c is greater than d, then the maximum does not occur at either endpoint, as is shown in the diagram below, okay? So f has a maximum in the open interval a, b. This implies that f c, or function at x equal to c, function value, is a relative maximum, and c is a critical number of f. Finally, because f is differentiable at c, we can conclude that f prime, or the first derivative of a at c, is equal to zero. Okay, so we show it in the diagram. The functional value at x equal to a and x equal to b is d, on the vertical axis, and the relative maximum occurs at the point x equal to c, where the functional value is fc, which is greater than d. So f, f is continuous on a, b, open interval, and differentiable on the open interval a, b. So that's case one, when f of x is greater than d. Case three. Uh, let f of x, it should be f of x less than d for some x in a, b. Then by extreme value theorem, we know that f has a minimum at some value c, and that is shown in the diagram below. So f has a minimum at some value c in the interval a, b. Since f of c is less than d, remember the value of the function at a and at x equal to a and at x equal to b is d and the value of the function at c is less than d, then the minimum value does not occur at either end point. So f has a minimum in the open interval a, b. This implies that f, c is a relative minimum and is a critical number of f. Finally, f is differentiable at c, and we can conclude that f prime c is equal to zero. So this is the picture, relative minimum, minimum of f, uh, relative minimum, f is uh, minimum is occurs at when x equal to c and f is continuous on the interval a, b and differentiable on a, b. So because f is differentiable, we can conclude that f prime c is equal to zero. That's a zero, okay? 
So in both cases, we are in the three cases, we proved that F is being continuous on the closed interval A, B and differentiable in the open interval A, B and that if a, because f of a is equal to f of b, then, then there must be at least one number c in the open interval a, b, such that f prime c is equal to zero. This is a very important theorem in calculus, and we will discuss some problems using this theorem, okay? If you have any question, write me a small comment, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And please subscribe to my channel by hitting the red subscribe button at the bottom right corner. I come back every week with new problems and new solutions. Thanks, have a nice day, see you next time.